Sri Padnemi Maharaj, who will be coming on to, um, to speak more about Sri Guru Dev as a speaker, author, and poet. Um, and I'll, I know that we all know Nemi Maharaj very well, uh, but for those who don't and those who might be tuning in for the first time, um, he has had such an elevated association starting with Srila Prabhupada, who he practiced under since 1973. <laughs> and then he also had association with Srila Gurudev from 1996 and actually Srila Bhaktivedanta Bharati Goswami Maharaj from 2011. He received sannyas in 2004 and is also an incredible uh, teacher in his own right and, and as well as a musician and um, speaks many languages and has especially been um, helpful in the Eastern European, um, Ukraine and Russia and countries such as this. So um, Nimi Maharaj, thank you so much for joining us. And you also have 30 minutes to deliver your Harikata uh, and the floor is yours. How do you bowl? I'm going to sing the pranams, but not because I'm a great singer or a musician, but because Gurudev loved the violin. Nama Vishnu Padayo Krishna Pristayo Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Sami Iti Namine Nama Vishnu Padayo Radhikaya Priyatmane Chi Shima Bhakti Vedanta Narayani Tinamine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaitam Dadadha Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Bol Hare Bol Hare Bol Nikai Gaura Hare Bol I'm offering my humble obeisances at Lotus Feet of my beloved Diksha Guru, Nichilil Pravishti Shishima Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, Lotus Feet of my beloved Shiksha and Sanyas Guru, Rupanu Gavara Shishima Bhaktivedanta Narayanga Swami Maharaj, Guru Day. On this day of his disappearance, the Lotus Feet of my beloved Shiksha Guru, Shri Bhaktivedanta Bharati Maharaj, I offer my humble obeisances at the Lotus Feet of Param Pujapad Srila Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj, who appeared on this day, uh, Uttam Bhagavat, Maha Bhagavat Uttam Bhakta. And I beg his forgiveness for neglecting his glorification to concentrate on glorifying my Gurudev. I'm reading now from the introduction or offering in Acharya Kesari, Srila Gurudev's. Uh, biography of his Guru Maharaj. So he's writing almost, and I'm offering, as I'm reading, I'm offering this also to Gurudev because how can I express my sentiments better than he can? O most beloved of Gu Mukunda, O best of the followers of Sri Sarup and Sri Rup, I'm a most unqualified servant, but whatever I am, I belong to you alone. O best of gurus, you become pleased by the insignificant service of your servants, considering it to be very great. O oh, Gurudev, kindly accept this bhakti argya from your fallen, destitute, and unworthy servitor, and be pleased with it. All glory is unto you. Disappearance, it's difficult to, I mean, when Srila Gurudev disappeared, it's like the universe imploded terrible uh, but the the tragedy first of all because Srila Gurudev is not here with us we can't be with him physically we can't hear his beautiful katar we can't have our personal interactions with him 
Uh, but as Mahabudi said yesterday, so she, he asked Srila Gurudev, how can we repay you? And Gurudev said, you can't, but you have to try. And that's an existential dilemma, really, because service to Guru is the most valuable. In fact, it's the only really valuable thing in the whole world, but we can't do it. But actually, our ten inspired by him, we can actually serve him. It's mad. But just this sense of how wonderful Gurudev is in, in all ways that we can imagine, and many, many ways, unlimited ways that we can't imagine, and how un utterly incompetent I am, we are, I am, to glorify him. This is painful. Uh, talking about Srila Gurudev as an orator, the first time I came across his presence as an orator was in 1993. Not that I heard him at that time, but some uh, senior devotees from ISKCON came around. So there was a big scandal in ISKCON because, as we know, the older ISKCON devotees had been associating with Srila Gurudev. And then on the occasion of my Guru Maharaj's sannyas, centennial or not centennial but anniversary so traditionally the iskon devotees would go to she uh keshuji Gaudiamat in mathura and she they would give her guitar so he they were circulating there was a scandal outrage there was circulating a speech by Srila gurudev that gurudev was saying if swami maharaj only spread the chanting of the holy name and Bhagavad Gita, then he is servant of Mahavishnu. But he is much more. He is a servant of uh, Rasaraj Mahabhav. Somehow or other, the Iskon, these Iskon devotees, they cut out the second part and they said, Oh, he's saying that he's just a servant of Mahavishnu. And I looked at the transcript and I said, No, he's an orator. He's giving this, this effect that. The first time I actually saw him was about three days after Srila, Srila Prabhupada uh, disappeared. And I came, I came back to Krishna Balaram Mandir and the Indian bodied sannyasi unknown to me was singing J. Anilo Premadana at Srila Prabhupada's Samadhi. So that was actually Srila Gurudev. And, and I met him again in 1996. Mm. So, Uh, Srila Gurudev is present in his instructions. Mm. Just like my Guru Maharaj offered to his, he said, so about his Guru Maharaj, he said he is, he is present in his instructions. He lives in his instructions and his follower lives with him. Uh, so I want to look at, there's a couple of two poems that he wrote, or songs, I should say, that he wrote. And they're very short, and he wasn't a he he wasn't a prolific songwriter, so we can understand that he put everything. They're very 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 condensed. So the first, this is the his mood towards his Gurudev, his our my Param Gurudev, Sri Bhakti Brigan Keshu Goswami Maharaj, Guru Charana Kamala Bhajiman. Ah, why? Love to speak. Because Guru is totally transcendental, but he's touching the ground. This is the amazing thing that transcendence appears to us. It's like transcendence is punching a hole in, in the envelope of this material universe and appearing as Gurudev, appearing as the instructions of Gurudev. Just recently, we celebrated Christmas in our own different, different ways. And there was one discussion that the original guru is actually Balaram. Uh, and even the, anyway, that's another thing. But there's this verse in St. John's Gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then they're saying that this word came. So this word in Greek is logos. It's not just a grammatical word. It means discourse. It can mean all sorts of things, discourse. 
So Harikata is actually with, and it's none different from Krishna. Oh. Just like we glorify Srila Sarasthi Prabhupada, Kripaya Harikirtana Murti Dharam, that by your great mercy, you assumed the form of Harikata. So Guru is like this, that his words, transcendental words, they're not from this material world. They, they work in this material world, but not just in a material way. And it's explained in, in Srimad Bhagavatam that his, the words uttering, uh, emanating from his lotus mouth, they touch the lotus, the saffron mercy particles on the lotus feet of the Lord. This sound vibration, Gurudev is none different than that sound vibration. Oh, if we we're in this very, very difficult to obtain human life, but if we don't meet with this somebody, with this great personality, oh, then it's a great tragedy. Our human life has actually gone in vain because human life is the only way that we can actually understand the purpose of life, understand the nature of life, understand what is spirit and how we can uh, attain spiritual consciousness by divine association. But if we can meet such a person, oh, such a wonderful fortune that Sri Gurudev used to give the example that there's a turtle in the ocean and there's a plank with a hole in it floating on the surface of the ocean. And the turtle comes up once every hundred years for breath. So what is the chance that that turtle is going to stick his head through the hole in the plank? That is the chance of meeting a spiritual master. And what to speak of such a personality as our Gurudev, such a unique personality. His, he emphasized the necessity that we should understand the speciality of spiritual master. Of his spiritual master, he said that he emphasized, he always preached Sutta Bhakti as the essence of Vedanta. And he instructed others to do the same. He said, this is the unique contribution of his life. So we should understand that unique contribution of the life. What is the unique contribution of our Gurudev's life? So he broadcast the glories of Radha Krishna's pastimes, not only the glories of Radha Krishna's pastimes, but the glories of service, divine service, as kinkaris, as maidservants of Sri Madhya Radhika, to those pastimes. This is the glory. This is the glory of his instructions. This is the glory of his sound vibrations, always coming up to that. Uh, we're so fortunate to get darshan. One time, one devotee, Sri Gurudev went, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but he, uh, he went somewhere and came back. And there was one devotee who was chanting. He didn't come to see Sri Gurudev. And Gurudev said, you don't understand that one darshan, my darshan is worth millions of your rounds. Uh, just like Narutam Tako is saying that hmm, by prolonged exposure to Ganga, we become purified, but simply by your darshan, we become purified. Krishna Kripaki, Ananda Murti, he's the blissful form of Krishna's mercy. What an amazing statement. And Srila Gurudev himself was so blissful. We're fortunate. Uh, Brajnath Prabhu, he, he related how when Srila Gurudev left for the West first time, there were four, he said, they were in the car, he was in the back. <clears throat> he said, there's four, four things I want to do. Now, I don't remember the first three exactly, but something like, I want to visit the places that Swamiji went to. I want to meet with his devotees and help them. I want to roll in the dust of his lotus feet in those places. And I want to have fun. Anandamurti. I want to have fun saving fallen conditioned souls. Saving mm, the disciples of Swami Maharaj, his Swami Maharaj, our Srila Prabhupada, who were drying up because we, were, we weren't getting that transcendental association. Have fun. That was his fun. That's Lord Nityananda's fun. Oh. 
bhakti bhav prem. Oh, dina jana karna nidana. So this is his mercy. Karna. This is his mercy. Giving that special, this is Gurudev's, giving that special mercy and giving that special goal. Anarpati chirin chirat. It's not given in so long. We can't even calculate how long. I mean, we can rattle off some numbers. Millions, trillions of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be an eternity. And he's giving. <clears throat> Bhakti bhav prem. Tina prakashata. So he's giving bhakti, means sadhan bhakti, bhav, bhav bhakti, and prem. Oh, there's a point here. Because Srila Gurudev said that we cannot in this, the sadhak cannot in this body attain prem. Bhav is maximum. But he's saying bhakti bhav prem, Tina Prakashata. He's revealing not only sadhan bhakti, but also bhav, and not only bhav, also prem. Just like Narutan Thakur also saying the same thing. So how is this possible? Because Gurudev is eternal associate. So we are so fortunate that we're not only meeting with an authentic spiritual master, but we're meeting with an eternal associate of the divine couple who's appeared here in this world. Heavens to Betsy. It's going to take so long. So... Mm. Then Shruti Smriti of Purana Namahi. So am I making all this up? Guru Dev saying no. All this is coming from Kino Spashtish Praman. This is a Vedic evidence. Oh. Guru Dev always stuck. One time he's reputed that one time he said, nobody loves like I do and nobody knows the Shastra like I do. So he was presenting the epitome of of uh, loving devotional service, but all with reference to Shastra, Guru Shastra and Sadhu. Oh. And then the other poem, which I'm not going to go into at length, or even, uh, um, Bajijana, Bajijana Manasukakari, Radhe Sham, Shama, Sham. Two books. Particularly, so many of Srila Gurudev's books are just, well, they're all amazing, wonderful, such a variety. Sri Bhakti Rasayan, for example, where he's revealing his, he's revealing his heart of Ras. His heart becomes like a sky, and he's describing the moods from um, Brihad Bhagavatamritam, which is quoting from Bhagavatam. He's describing the moods of all these personalities. And, and they're all, he's accommodating all of those moods within his own heart. It's most extraordinary. But two books particularly. One is uh, the biography of his Guru Maharaj. I quoted the introduction to that. So, this Srila Gurudev is not commenting here on any scripture, but he's, uh, he's structured the whole thing with great devotion to his Guru Maharaj. First of all, he comments on his, his birth, family lineage. So as we see how he's approaching his Guru Maharaj, this is the clue for us that how we can approach him. And our spiritual masters, not only Shri Gurudev, of course. His family lineage, uh, in Param Gurudev's case, very glorious. His two aunts were the first female disciples of Saraswati Prabhupada. And then the service he performed to his Guru Maharaj, just like the service that our Gurudev performed to his uh, Gurudev, Shri Bhakti Bhagavan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, he was with him from 1945 to 1968 when he disappeared. Uh, <coughs> so, Srila Bhakti began Keshav Goswami Maharaj, then after the, the, he's describing after the disappearance of Saraswati Prabhupada, how he assumed the role of Acharya uh, after the breakup, after the breakup of the Gaudiya Mart. And then his amazing character, 
his purity, his steadfastness. Uh, one pastime that he liked to relate, Srila Gurudev liked to relate. So Gurudev met, uh, Srila Param Gurudev met with a, an atheist. Uh, he was collecting, there'd been great floods in, in Mayapur, Nav Mayapur Navadri, and he was collecting for Gorpunima. So he met with this atheist, I, I forget his name, he's very famous, some bubble. And the atheist began chastising him that you've come here begging from these people, can't you see how they're suffering? Don't you know there's been a great flood? And Srila Bhakti began, Keshe Gosamara, he said, ah, I don't know about a flood. He said, I can see the cigarette in your hand is still burning. And then he said, the, only, the disease is birth and death. We've come to cure this disease of birth and death. That's bold, bold preaching. Gurudev loved this pastime. When we presented um, dramas for him, I, I took part in many, drive, many dramas. He invariably neglected to mention me when he was appreciating all the actors at the end, except one time. Um, we were playing um, Nishing Hadev and we didn't have enough actors so I, I took the part of Sandra Namarka and Gurudev said there should have been two teachers Sandra Namarka but when we presented um, the Srila Bhakti Bhagyan Keshe Goswami has like and I took the role of Srila Param Gurudev for part of that and we we did this pastime, and Gurudev was so happy with that, and he related the whole pastime again. So Srila Bhakti Brigan Keshe Goswami was such a bold, almost savage preacher. And then his Siddhanta, uh, Srila Bhakti Brigan Keshe Goswami was very, very clear. Yes, just like this morning, we were hearing how Srila Gurudev would invite the pandas of Mathura, and then he would listen to them, and then he would correct their conceptions. How Srila Bhakti Bhagavan Keshe Gosamra has protected the Sampradaya, false conceptions, and uh, how he wrote, for example, his um, exposure of Mayavad philosophy and his Radvinod Bihari Ashtakam. And he, he uh, manifested the Gaudiya Patra and Bhagavat Patrak and hmm, Upadeshavali. So Srila Gurudev has written this biography in such a way that it, he's a brilliant storyteller. And he takes every excuse, if I can use the word, to tell stories. He tells stories about how Srila Param Gurudev challenged his teacher at twice. Or he gives two examples, uh, how he challenged his teacher at, at university. Uh, and in each case, in each instance, he relates the different points that Srila Param Gurudev made in, in many, many, many cases. So he's giving, he's telling these stories. He's expressing the moods of Srila Param Gurudev, and also expressing the moods of his disciples towards him. On one occasion, Srila Param Gurudev said that he was thinking of giving his three beloved disciples, Srila now, Srila Bhaktivedanta Vamgo Samaraj, Srila Bhaktivedanta Chirika Maharaj, and Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayango Samaraj. He said, I'm thinking of giving you red cloth. And Srila Gurudev was crying, weeping. And he said, you can give me any color cloth you like. You can give me white cloth or you can make me naked, but in any case, I'm completely yours. I surrender unto you completely. Uh, so he's expressing the moods of disciples to Guru. And he's presented so many different pastimes and so many different instructions that we can actually follow. It's very practical. So it's, it's very readable on the one hand. And on the other hand, he's pouring out his devotion to his Guru Maharaj. My god sister, um, Mula Prakriti, she complimented Srila Gurudev on the biography. Hmm. 
I, w- I actually helped. This is my first engagement for Srila Gurudev, actually. He, in 98, I said that I was going to India. He said, you should go to India, you should edit my books. And that's all he said. So I got there, there was no computer. <clears throat> I had to go out and find some cronky old computer somewhere out in the village, out in the town. And finally, I was working with Shanti Didi and talk about last minute. We wanted to get it ready by beginning of Kartik, Kartik, first day of Kartik, because that's the disappearance day of his Guru Maharaj. So we were actually doing editing on the printer. Uh, but finally, he'd given his instructions how he wanted it to be. He was very particular how he wanted the, you know, the, his, the title of his Guru Maharaj couldn't be broken up and the name of the book and everything and finally we gave it to him and he looked he said oh that's what i wanted and then he looked at a bit more oh that's what i wanted as well it was amazing it was so beautiful somehow other to yeah to please guru like that is 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 a great gift and the other not that it's exactly a book it is a book but it's not been printed or published which is extremely important is she his commentary on Shivalak Pusmanjali that he gave to senior vice, uh, senior um, ISKCON devotees Vaishnavas <coughs> in the very early nineties. So this is it's unprecedented in the sense that he's a totally authentic spiritual master guru Vaishnava coming in the line of Lord Chaitanya totally authorized from like from our point of view completely authorized and giving an amazing discourse on the nature of manjri on the nature of the ultimate service there's no higher service than that oh. not only is there no higher service than that but there's no higher position than that anarpata chirin chira shri chitani mahaprabhu he's giving us this extraordinary gift Namo Mahavadanyaya. Through his disciples, we were hearing yesterday from Pujabab by Kanas Maharaj, through his disciples and followers, especially the six Gosamis, they are displaying and offering this service, which is it's more elevated even than the service of the friends of Shimati Radhika, elevated in this sense that the Manjuris are actually closer to Shimati Radhika. Uh, she, um, Ragnatas Goswami, he's explaining in his prayers that even more dear than the Sakis headed by Lalita, that they can offer service that Lalita Vishaka cannot offer. Uh, dressing Shrimati Radhika, bathing her, and decorating her. Uh, Lalita will dress her to some extent, but the Manjus, they can do all sorts of m- menial service. And they can perform service when Lalita Vishaka cannot come. If Radha and Krishna are together in a confidential mood. So this, the manjuris they can enter and serve where Lalita Vishaka cannot. They will hesitate and they'll actually ask permission from the manjuris to come. The manjuris are younger and they're, they're senior. Uh, Lalita Vishaka and the, these Paramprash Dasakis, they're senior. So Srila Gurudev has expressed this, gave instructions. He said, I heard from Yashoda Gopi. She said that when these ISKCON devotees came, they told Gurudev, oh, we're in Manjari Bab. He said, no. So he told his disciples, I had to give them everything. Otherwise, they'd become Pukka Sahaja. So he gave, he gave everything. And he knew that they would leave him. So he gave everything in a very, very strong, concentrated way not only like displaying in an academic way like a museum piece but giving instructions place by place can we presume to enter these things he said yes if we hear from a pure devotee and then remember what we've heard he said is this reality yes it's reality of course it's mixed but mm, it's not just imagination. There's reality, there's transcendental reality there. So the whole key is hearing 
these transcendental pastimes from pure devotee. And <clears throat> this is actually Srila Gurudev's supreme gift. That is, this is really what he came for. Uh, and I'm offering my obeisances at his lotus feet and begging that he will accept me, continue to accept me more, begging that I will actually have the grace to surrender this lotus feet and really, really accept him as my guide in service so that I can move forward. Hare Krishna. Shila Gurudev Ki Jai. Hari Bol, thank you so much, Nimi Maharaj. And uh, thank you also for including the bhajans of Srila Gurudev in there. Um, I mean, he's so prolific as as Srila Prabhupada was also so prolific, but um, those, those bhajans are especially, I think, very relishable too. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for touching upon this aspect of his vani um, because I've seen quotes where he said, you know, one day that we would really appreciate really appreciate and recognize what he's given us with these books. And I think now increasingly the Sangha is realizing this across um, across different groups, but uh, they, they really are so instructive and can carry us, uh, can carry us through. You showed Anand and I saw you unmuted. I didn't know. Do you, yeah, you I was like really to? taken by, uh, thank you, Marge, beautiful as ever. Yeah. And um, I was really taken by that, that kind of uh, impromptu and quite subtle thing you said at the end when you said, I really hope that he accepts me. And then actually, then you switched and said, I really hope I accept him. And I think that's actually, that's actually our greatest battle. We are accepted. It's, it's our job. Our problem is, can we accept him? This is actually, this is, a, this is the challenge for our humility. Can we open our hearts and accept his acceptance? That's what I really, that's that really was powerful. That is the key, actually. Re I mean, really, really openly accepting him, and that's what he's waiting for. I, I wonder. He's, he's already accepted us, right? I mean, he's he's, he's already done. That's like, yeah. No, not fully, because we haven't we haven't opened fully. He can't. It depends mm -hmm. on our like on our intensity of desire. I've got personal experience of that. He's waiting for us really to open up to him. One time I walked into his room with, uh, with Akhilesh Prabhu, actually. Like, it was the first time he'd seen Gurudev. I just met him in, in Madura, in uh, Delhi. And Gurudev looked at me and said, So, are you ready to surrender, like Brajanath? No, I see from your face you're not. <laughs> Akhilesh like, no. Gobsmack. Wow. So he really... And, and one time when I really did open up my heart to Srila Gurudev, he, I mean, he came out and found me in a very, very mystical way. 